Okay, again, welcome everyone to this traffic safety webinar, uh, which is sponsored by the North Carolina Governor's Highway Safety Program. This is one in a series of webinars addressing topics of interest for North Carolina's traffic safety professionals. The series is co-hosted by the Institute for Transportation Research and Education at NC State University and the University of North Carolina Highway Safety Research Center. Today's topic is using North Carolina Vision Zero's crash data tools, and it's going to be presented by Matt Culiani. Matt is a senior member of the Geospatial and Analytics Decision Management Group at ITRI, where he specializes in developing web content, data analysis and visualizations, and technology solutions for public audiences. Matt has worked in traffic safety for seven years, and he's also a key planning and support staff member for the North Carolina Vision Zero Initiative and the North Carolina Traffic Safety Conference. So Matt, if you'll go ahead and uh, share your screen to begin your presentation. All right, thank you, Eugene. Let's go ahead and get my screen showing now. <clears throat> so if everybody can see that, uh, I've got my presentation going. <clears throat> and uh, I just wanted to say thank you all for coming and uh, seeing the presentation. I know that a lot of people have an excuse right now to do whatever they want at home, so I appreciate that you're joining me. So as Eugene said, I'm Matt Kaliani, and I work at the Institute for Transportation Research and Education. I've been working there for about seven years now, and I've been included and a whole bunch of traffic safety initiatives, including the North Carolina Vision Zero initiative. I'm a behind the scenes kind of guy that occasionally pops his head out to answer questions, give a presentation, or like do the help desk. I work in all sorts of computer technologies, specializing in the ones that produce and publish stuff like website development and design, data visualization with Tableau and Node, mapping with Esri's suite and Mapbox, along with all the data techs, such as SQL, Excel, Alteryx, that sort of stuff. Basically, I'm a nerd. When NC Vision Zero was started, we wanted to not only have stats and information, but also provide some analysis and information based on cold, hard data. <clears throat> a kind of data that produces all those great stats, that kind of data that makes even excited data scientists slump their shoulders and reconsider their career choice. <clears throat> so because of that, we have a lot of data problems, just in general with data. We have so much always with all the kind of data that we get in and we get all these different kinds of problems. They're complex, overwhelming, unconnected, tiresome, expensive, but data is also all of these things as well. Important, necessary, powerful, unbiased, and also especially life-saving. It actually can. So in order to take all that data and to make it useful for everyone to actually try and save those lives, we first have to simplify things. So we'll take the data, <clears throat> we'll take any kind of location data, be able to clean it up, um, show where crashes and other things are. Second, and we will inform the public and the stakeholders in traffic safety. We'll take the data, clean it up some more, produce some stats that will help drive the programs of other traffic safety folks as well as inform the normal people of how good and bad things are going. And third, to analyze the data and come up with some conclusions that will help everyone out. To take the data and apply a statistical analysis to generate conclusions, show trends and things that are changing and, and, and try to answer the question, why? Anything that we can derive out of the data that we can help save a life. <clears throat> so in doing so, we asked and begged and are now getting data from sources such as the NCDOT, DMV, Highway Patrol, among others. We take that data and we have produced a handful of tools that we have published for everyone's use. You can find all the tools on the NC Vision Zero website under the data and analytics link. 
The first tool I'm going to demonstrate is the safety dashboard. Its purpose is to take the focus areas that are important to traffic safety, such as pedestrian, speeding, seatbelts, et cetera, and to show how they are doing. It gives the plain number of fatalities and serious injuries, as well as showing the trend that it seems they are going. It also tries to answer the questions, when, where, why, and who. Uh, we also added a tab that shows the top counties and how they are ranking in fatalities. So let's go ahead and load it up. So everyone should see my web browser. I've loaded up the safety dashboard and I will turn on a little tool that will help show where my mouse is. <clears throat> As you can see on the safety dashboard, the first thing is all of these uh, focus areas that NC Vision Zero is concerned with, like unbelted, young driver, pedestrian, all that sort of stuff. Um, and for each of these, we show how many fatalities happened, you know, and each mouse over kind of gives a more detailed description as to what it means. You can also choose serious injuries and it will change the data for you. You can choose both of them. The line between uh, after the number is the trend line. This is the trend that it seems to be going. If you mouse over just a little bit, you'll see that the year will change. So you can actually see the pure number. That line you see, if you're interested in statistics, you can mouse over it and actually see the R squared and P value. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it, ignore it. You can just look at the line and see how where it seems to be going. <clears throat> I'll move it back to fatalities for now. You can also select uh, various years going all the way back to 2007 or include all of them as well so that you can just see how many overall since then. You can also change your location. You can change it to a certain county and I'm going to do so now and I'm going to pick on Durham County because that's where I live and so all of their statistics are going to show. <clears throat> so here's Durham County in 2019. Um, I also wanted to point out that the date of our last available data was the end of December last year. The reason why it's not more up to date is that's how often we get the data. We're about three months behind in getting crash data. That has to do with reasons the DMV and the DOT give us about data, complete the data completeness and how they want to make sure when they say, this was a fatality because of a crash. There's a time limit they have. Anyway, so you can learn more about this. Um, that also brings up a good point down here that these numbers might be different from what the DOT is publishing. And that, of course, has something to do with the reporting, the update frequencies, like I mentioned. But also, they're the ones that change it, and we're the ones that eventually get it changed. So if you need to use and you need these exact numbers, for what you're doing and you need it the most up to date. We are not the definitive source that you would have to go to the DOT or the DMV or the Highway Patrol or <clears throat> whatever local precinct, whatever local precinct may actually uh, have all that data. Okay, that being said, let's move on. When you click on the win tab, it's gonna show you everything that has to do with time. All right, so uh, I have fatalities selected right now, and so it shows the trend line. I'm still on Durham. It remembered that I was on Durham and looking at Durham. If I wanna change it to state, I'll change it to state. It still thinks I wanna hear about Durham. I don't, let me show all of it. So this is all of North Carolina. Here's the week at a glance. It's what I call a Tadao, time of day, day of week. Here's the, the weekdays, Sunday through Saturday, and these are the hours of the day. Uh, zero, which is midnight time, all the way up like that. So think about it like military time. The darker the area, the more frequent it has. Um, it looks like on Saturday uh, around 1900 through 2200, that seems to be a 22 there. So that's what it looks like. Uh, here, year to glance, it's very similar. January through December, the first of the month, all the way to 31st. 
one of the cool things that you can see about here are some of them are blank, like here, March 1st, there's nothing there. That's great. That means there were zero fatalities in the state during that one. So that's really awesome. If you wanted to see from an exact reporting source from all of these various departments that we have out there, police departments, sheriff's offices, that sort of stuff, you can choose those. All right, the where tab, <clears throat> this is everything based on location. You want to know where stuff is. The trend line is up there like, like in the previous one. This county map is going to show you the frequency. So it shows you which counties have the most fatalities in 2019. If I wanted to change the year, then I would, it would show me the fatalities for, let's say, a different year. And so the county map might change a little bit. Doesn't seem like it changed very much. But down here is the point map where you can actually see exactly where it all happened. You can zoom in and you can look to see mouse over one of the things. This one seems to uh, be pedestrian. The weather was cloudy. It shows where it was located. Uh, this one isn't a kind of source where you use it um, in order to do a huge amount of analysis. We have a different tool for doing more location-based analysis. But if all you wanted to know was about your county or your city, this is a great place to go and just show where it happened. All right, moving over to the Y tab. This is our attempt to show based on the data why something happened. This is the first contributing circumstance that is listed on the crash reports when a, in this case, a fatal crash is sent, um, is reported, goes back, it goes into the data. There's always a contributing circumstance that's put on these crash reports. And that is the best guess. That's the, the best guess that they have, which is why somebody crashed. If you want to learn more about it, you can contact me later, but I don't want to spend too much time explaining contributing circumstances. Right here, it looks like in 2018, we had alcohol use, crossed center line, erratic behavior, and, and a bunch of other stuff. All right, who? This is the stuff based on demographics that we currently have. So in 2018, looks like these are the females in this age and gender chart. Here's all the males based on the age groups. <clears throat> um, ethnicity we have down here between the different kinds of ethnicities. Now this is all based on the crash reports. So I have to say something along the lines of if they were wrong in their ethnicity, um, that's the data we get is based on what the officer, trooper, sheriff actually put down in a report. <clears throat> um, all right, and moving on to the top counties, this is just a, a, a straight list that says where you are ranked, um, where your county is ranked in the list. Mecklenburg is almost always going to be top. That's just simply because there's a lot more population in Mecklenburg County, and it usually falls along those lines. It goes all the way 100 counties. <clears throat> so that's the safety dashboard in a nutshell. It's uh, a takeaway from this is this is showing you how all the various safety focus areas that we do on Vision Zero and how they're currently doing. All right, let's move on to the next tool. <clears throat> this is the crash query tool. Uh, man, if there is a tool that is confusing to people, it is this tool. It's so confusing because it holds so much data, provides all the ways to look at the data. We do our best to simplify the data while still providing a powerful tool and finding that hard to find stat, like how many pedestrian related crashes happened in Durham County. The first thing we did was to separate the data into three categories, <clears throat> crashes, vehicles, and persons. The difference between those may not seem apparent, but it is important. For each crash, you will have one or more vehicles. For each vehicle, you will have one or more people. So if you want to know how many crashes happened, you go to the crashes tab. If you want to know how many people died, you would go to the persons tab. 
we included all the data that we could get complete, that is with all the necessary data and not missing huge chunks. So we provide uh, only from 2000 to 2018. We will be updating it to 2019 in the coming months. I don't have an exact date on that yet. Of course, we have it so that you can filter by safety focus areas in case you are really interested only in speeding fatalities or something. We also have something called a one-way and two-way tables and charts. I'll show you what those are and what they mean. Go ahead and load this guy up. All right, crash query tool. This is just the intro page to try to give you at least a, a little bit of information. I'll move on to crashes. Okay, what we're seeing here. Um, here's the data av available. You notice it is only through 2018. I mentioned that we will be updating it, but not yet. Um, crash year, of course, you can choose all the way back to 2000. Geographic areas, you can choose be between the counties, cities, troops, divisions, geographic sections, update when you change the geographic area, and then reportable crashes are the yes and the no. If you know what those are, then you're probably in law enforcement. And then here's the uh, the way to filter by safety focus areas where you want only motorcycle involved or pedestrian involved, that sort of stuff. Um, each of these uh, little question marks has a little bit more information to try and help um, you understand what you're looking at. So let's move on to this one-way table. A one-way table is basically showing you just one kind of chart like one set of bar charts. Nothing trying to get too complicated. It's just one category and you wanna see how many there are. So uh, if I said crash severity, it'll load up. Try to remember this is a lot of data it's parsing through. Um, and so for all the crashes that we have in 2018 for the state, We've got uh, a lot that have no injury all the way to ones that in the crash report for some reason are null. Don't know why, but that's how it was in the grand total. If uh, first harmful event, load it all up. <clears throat> These are the first events that happened to cause harm in the crash. And it's just literally the, the straight number number of how many had happened. Well, the Highway Patrol likes to see how many happened per troop. And so here's the various troops. It's not an alphabetical order, it's in number order. All right, so you get the idea of what a one-way table is. A two-way table is where you choose the row and the column. So if I wanted to, I don't know, let's go with, um, I picked on the troops, so let's pick on the troops some more. It's gonna load up. And the column is in pedestrian involved crashes. So it's saying in troop A, this many pedestrian involved crashes, this many were not involved, and this was the total in troop A. If I change that to, let's see, oh, month of crash, I guess. This one should be really big. <clears throat> so there's a scroll bar down here so that you can scroll along the months so you can see how many happened, how many crashes happened in 2018 for the each troop in the highway patrol for each month of the thing. There's totals on every side on both row and column. Okay. So that is what a two-way table is. It is where you choose the row and the column. And as you can see, there are a huge amounts of categories here. This is why I say it's so confusing, trying to decide which ones are which. And of course, trying to know what it means by ambient light. That is in a lot of crash reports, daylight, dark, dusk, dawn, that kind of stuff. That might be important to some people, might not be at all important to some people, but we are providing it. Now, we also have the ability to turn it into a chart. So instead of just having numbers, we can actually have the bar charts for you. 
Um, and down here, it's just another county map based on frequency of just crashes, not not just fatal crashes. If I wanted to know uh, that kind of stuff, I'll have to move over and start doing different kinds of filters. Um, and we can switch over to vehicles and persons. They will look about um, identical. The tools look basically the same, and that's on purpose. But you have to remember that there are a certain number of crashes. In each of those crashes, there's one or more vehicles. <clears throat> In each of those vehicles, there's one or more persons. So you'll get different data numbers in each of these. All right, let's move on. Next one is the distracted driving uh, dashboard. It's, <clears throat> its purpose is to quickly show where the distracted related crashes are and to allow you to see the summaries based on road type, percentage of crashes, and then over under map, which I'll show you and explain it. Let's go ahead and take a quick look. All right, this direct the driving dashboard. All right, the first thing you see is a big map. It shows you all the points as to where distracted related crashes are. Now, this does not say they were texting while this was happening. It doesn't say they were um, trying to exchange a CD for a new CD. It doesn't have details like that because most crash reports don't do details like that. Um, a lot of them don't have options. So that you're not going to find that kind of data. You'll have to go to each and every crash report um, that's out there to try to find that kind of data. You may end up having to talk to the officers who actually dealt with that kind of crash as well. So if that's what you're looking for, that's how deep you'll have to go. But on this, it's going to show you where they happened. Now, of course, we have the counties that you can choose, LEL regions, that's the law enforcement liaisons. Those are uh, closely related with GHSP, <clears throat> planning organizations like MPOs and RPOs, and how to select them here. And then, of course, all the various kinds of severities. Um, if you didn't know, K is killed. A type injury is uh, suspected serious. A B type is suspected minor. And C is just kind of maybe there's an injury. O type is no injury. And so um, if you hear that from people who deal with crash reports, those those letters, you kind of know a little bit now. Uh, of course, you can choose the year going back to 2007. And of course, still down here, date of last available data. <clears throat> Keep an eye on that. We, we also put this little chart down here uh, that shows um, how many have been located, which means how many had data complete enough that we can actually say on a point, say it was right here. Some of them uh, didn't. Um, like the invade, uh, there was an invalid location, the route was measurement was not right, a bunch of different errors that you can get when doing GIS sort of stuff. So. If you're looking at and you're like, I don't see that distracted driving crash that I heard about on my street over there, this is probably the reason why. All right, the next tab is the percentage of total crashes. This shows you more about how distracted related crashes are affecting the total number of crashes. And as you can see, it seems to be going down a little bit, but yet still, that's 18% of crashes have some kind of related to distraction. This is based on road classifications. Seems that on local roads, it's a lot more prevalent than on uh, interstate roads. <clears throat> this is the over under map that I was talking about. Um, so an over under map is where there is a state average and if it's yellow, it's above the state average and below the state average. So here in Guilford, the state average is 21.65, but the distracted driving for them is 23. This lets you know which ones have a higher percentage based on the state average or a lower percentage based on the state average. It can kind of show you where there might be spikes. Um, so if you're in one of these counties that have yellows, then uh, perhaps you might need to look at that if that's interesting or something you were trying to work on. All right, 
That's the distracted driving dashboard. Our next tool is the commercial vehicle crashes dashboard. This tool is to show everything about CMV crashes in the state. Those are commercial motor vehicles. Since CMVs are normally only enforced by the highway patrol, the tool is more trooper focused. There's an entire suite of CMV tools over on coverlab.org, which I also do, that the highway patrol is already using heavily for their motor carrier enforcement. So this is more to give the public a window into those kind of analytical tools. All right, I'll show you what it's got. Here we go. Okay, CMV dashboard. <clears throat> of course, you got more filters like you would expect the year. Here's the troop. If you didn't know, the highway patrol is split up into seven different troops and even more into troop districts. Um, they're lettered A through H. Uh, the reporting agency is just the highway patrol or anyone not the highway patrol, and of course, planning organizations, MPOs, RPOs, LELs. <clears throat> now you can choose which measure you want. It's not exactly like the other ones where you just say, I want fatals, I want serious injuries. These are CMV involved sort of things. So we, we make it just a little bit simpler. <clears throat> if you wanted to know where they are, are occurring, you can do that. It's also, we also made it so that if you click on any of the counties, all the other data is going to update. If you want to turn the county off, just click on it again. It'll go back to the state level. Um, and you can also, on this little point map over here, if you click on it, you can see the crash report if it's available. It looks like this one is. So we can actually click on it and literally see the crash report. It's Part of it's been redacted because this is reducing the amount of uh, personally identifiable information, but you can actually see about how the crash happened and read a little bit about what the uh, officer or trooper did, what they said about how the crash went, if that's important to you. <clears throat> uh, we also have the trend of how uh, the CMV involved fatalities are going. They tend to follow the economy. So when the economy goes down, the amount of um, commercial motor vehicles are out on the road. So the crashes go down when it goes back up, et cetera, et cetera. The road classifications where the crashes are happening. Here's another Tadao um, one with uh, time of day, day of week. And so you can see more are happening about daytime in the middle of the day when people are working because that's when the commercial motor vehicles are also working. And then the why, why are they happening? Um, now we split this into CMV and vehicles, which are obviously the non-commercial motor vehicle ones. So you can actually see uh, kind of, don't take this authoritatively, but who was at fault? Was it, was it the truck or was it a non-truck? And so you can see at least on the vehicle side for failure to reduce, reduce speed, it seems that mainly the vehicles were at fault, but that's not it. There's the exceeded state speed for conditions where it was almost all of the CMV's fault. Now, as I said, that's not authoritative. So don't go screaming at anybody saying, is he vision zero <laughs> says that we're crashing all these trucks. You'll have to go to the, uh, to the um, uh, reporting agencies, to the highway patrol to uh, actually figure out who actually did it and talk to maybe each trooper to, to get their uh, opinion. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Next tool is um, a bit old, in my opinion. It's not the data, that's not old, it's just the development platform. Vision Zero Maps was in development about five or six years ago and has been maintained only in minor ways. And yes, a five to six year old tool is considered old and busted compared to the new hotness that we are developing now, is still uh, great at location data. It gives a decent point map and actually has crash reports linked when you click on a point. Let me show you how that works. <clears throat> 
So it will show in your browser, but to me, that's a little bit small. So here's a link where you can click here to open in a new tab and it's more or less full screen. Sorry, I had to cough and I didn't want you guys to hear it. All right, so you can pick your location um, and because I'm picking on Durham, I'm going to choose county. If you wanted to see everything, you choose state, but you can actually go down to municipalities, those are cities and such. So it's loading up the counties. Oh, there we go. And where's my Durham? There you are. <clears throat> You'll see that in the background, the map has already moved to show Durham County, but we've got this pop up right now. Um, I'm going to choose previous year because that usually brings up a good amount of data. If you wanted something more exact, you can do the start date, end date. You can also choose whether you want just the fatalities or just the serious injuries or both of them. I'm just going to leave it on fatalities along with these other filters if you want it to be an intersection or work zone or even railroad. <clears throat> all right, so we've got all these little points. They may be tiny to you, but here we go. Uh, I can click on one and it'll tell me a little bit about it. It gives the crash ID, the severity, which we kind of already knew because we chose fatalities, when it happened, what kind of crash type, and what driver factors happened. This one was a lane departure. Um, and if I wanted to see the crash report, let's see if this one has it. Yes, it does. You'll find that some of these links to crash reports, they're not broken but the crash reports themselves have been taken off of public record. There's different reasons for that. Some of them are legal reasons. Maybe they're um, uh, still under investigation, things like that. A lot of different things can make it uh, not show up, but this one seems to, seems like this, maybe this person failed to stop at a stop sign. Poor guy. All right, so you can find out kind of what happened. Again, if you want to know exactly what happened, go talk to, in this case, it was probably Durham Police or Durham County Sheriff's Office that took care of that. If you wanted to know exactly uh, where different driver factors or safety, you see these safety focus areas, just like on Vision Zero, a driver age, vehicles, and stuff like that, we knew that this person uh, is a lane departure. So I'll click on that and it changes the icons to lane departure icon. So if you are only interested in seeing lane departure stuff, or if you are only interested in seeing alcohol related ones, it'll show you exactly where those are. So you don't have to go searching through all the little points trying to find the ones. Now, if you wanted to see all the different kinds of data, we have that available. This table thing up here can show you the actual table, table data. If that's not what you want to see, you can change. So if you don't want to see weather, you turn that off. Maybe you wanted to see if it's a CMV. Maybe you wanted to see what department uh, reported it or the severity, that kind of thing. Um, and so you can actually see the data. If you find the one that you wanted to look at, uh, you can click on it and it will highlight the one for you. So you don't have to, again, click through all the different ones, especially if you were looking at statewide for multiple years, that's going to be a lot of points to try to search through. You can also change the base map. This might be interesting. Hey, let's go into closer into the one I was looking at. I'm zooming in. Get closer. I think this was the one that left the road. Lane departure, I think so. <clears throat> so I'm going to change the base map to be the imagery and so we can kind of see um, a little bit more of, of exactly what might have happened. It looks, it says in the crash report they stopped, uh, they failed to stop and so they went off and apparently into these trees. You can see that the dot is not exactly where you think it should be, at least according to the crash report. <clears throat> and that, that can happen a lot in location data because when the officer or the trooper or the sheriff Whenever they do the crash report, they try to say exactly where it is. Now, they're not GIS technicians or anything like that, so they are guessing. Um, they're saying at this intersection, at this place, and then based on that, we are trying to assign exactly where that is. So some of them might be off a little bit. It might be actually over here, but perhaps when the 
officer was filling out his crash reports, maybe he was parked right here. And when it said, what's your location, it found his location and said, it happened right here. So things like that can always happen. All right, moving away from Vision Zero maps. <clears throat> a final tool I'm not gonna show you. <laughs> really, I'm not gonna show you because it's restricted to only Highway Patrol and GHSP folks. It requires a login and we show that it requires a login by putting a, a lock image on the tool there, right down here. <clears throat> what, it, uh, what it shows the Highway Patrol and the good folks at GHSP is the trends of the safety plan focus areas, as well as some performance tracking on those goals and their targets. Um, just about every agency and organization out there that feels it's responsible for traffic safety will create their own traffic safety plan. They almost always have some sort of metric that has to be met or some goal that has to be met or some target they're aiming for. The performance tracking part of that tool is showing them how they are doing against those goals. Currently, we're only doing that for the Highway Patrol and GHSP since they are kind enough to let us use their data and they're actively using the tool. They aren't comfortable allowing the public to see how they are doing at any given time, so they like that it requires a login. <clears throat> As well as being their report card for how they are doing. <clears throat> we have also added in maps, regions for crashes, trends, and other ways of looking at the data. The, the point is to allow them to see how they are doing, then explore how they could do better using the data. <clears throat> now, I did take a screenshot of the performance tracking part of the tool. Um, I blurred out the numbers, mainly because I put dummy data in just to get the screenshot. I wasn't going to um, step on any toes by doing this for the Highway Patrol or anything like that. So I'll point out some of the parts for you. <clears throat> As you can see, these, uh, these aren't safety focus areas like on Vision Zero, though some of them are obviously the same. These are the kind of uh, safety areas that the Highway Patrol their safety plan is focusing on. So they actually have type A injuries as one of their metrics that they are trying to meet or a target they're trying not to get to. So obviously you can't say a fatality is a goal that they're trying to get to. It's a target they're trying not to get to. Um, you can see each of these is the, the focus area they're talking about. Um, there's an actual uh, number that uh, is actually happening. And then it says the goal for where they should be at that point. Uh, they also have these trend lines going on so they can see how they've been doing either over the year or over the years. Usually this is just over the year so they can see if something has, has started uh, getting worse and do they need to switch to see, to, to change their enforcement to other things. If they are not meeting their goal or going beyond their target or something like that, it's going to be red. If they're doing great, it's going to be green like down here. And of course, they can change the year and all these different kinds of filters as to where they need to go. Now, I didn't, and I think I might have should have taken a, a screenshot of the details tab. <clears throat> That's the one that showed the maps and the various kinds of data that they can use to try to drill down further into their data, just seeing how they're doing and what they're supposed to be doing that's good to know but that doesn't help them to move forward uh that just says if, if, how they're doing if they're doing good or bad and then what do they do with that so that's why we added the details tab in there so they can go further down into it <clears throat> oh so i'm done showing the tools unless people have questions later on um in the q a section but aha here's the future <clears throat> this is the kind of stuff that we might be doing. I have to read this and I'm being very careful to say this as it's important. The following slides are ideas and only a few are in development. They're ideas, they're not promises or guarantees or things that are definitely coming, just ideas. Some of them are already approved. 
and some work has been done toward them, but most of them are still just ideas that have been floated, <coughs> excuse me, toward the decider people and others like that. Sorry, I keep coughing. Also, if you see any of them and you're like, ooh, ooh, I like that, I really want that one, then contact me and let me know. Ideas that we just kind of want to do this because it's cool don't usually go anywhere, but ideas of tools that some folks really want so that they can use it and have a ton more top power behind what they're doing, uh, that can help get that, that idea approved and then we can start with development. So really, let us know if one of these really strikes your fancy. So, of course, we are going to continue to update the data on all of our tools. Some of them are decently difficult to get it right, like the beast, like the crash query tool. Its data is a good example of making sure we get it right. That's a lot of categories. That's a lot of data out there that we need to make sure it gets right. Um, also, some of the existing dashboards are likely to get updated as well, more than just the data. The target tracking dashboard will likely get an SVLY. That's the same period last year uh, section, as well as some other cool visualizations that will help. <clears throat> and the distracted driving and the crash query tool will likely get a design update to make it look prettier and easier. <clears throat> Some new dashboard ideas have been floated as well. Ideas such as a high injury network for the state, not it's just like what those big cities use in their planning, allowing a whole host of planning tools to give some oomph to the planning organizations and towns that can't make or spend the money to create it. Also, maybe some Dedicated emphasis area dashboards, such as a dashboard focused entirely on speeding or on pedestrians, similar to what the distracted driving dashboard is giving. We may be making some top five dashboards as well. They would be smallish visualizations that allow some basic filtering and data to give folks the ability to do more than just look at a statistic to be able to actually do something around the stat. Um, an origin and destination dashboard could be possible. It's a tool that would uh, be able to show where the people were coming from and where they are going to. It can give some insights into the different graphics of the victims and some analysis could show some crash corridors based on people's travels. Uh, also, it would be nice to have a tool for the Highway Patrol that allows some monetize, monetization <laughs> of their enforcement activities since crashes actually cost taxpayers some money, being able to assign something like a speeding ticket, a monetary value could show some benefit to the legislators to potentially give them some more funding. <clears throat> now these are the Hail Mary type ideas that we'd love to tackle. Um, a risk analysis tool could provide a curve risk map. That's a, a, a map showing how and where dangerous curves are on a map, as well as a pedestrian risk map and potentially others. We'd also love to dig into some high level statistical analysis using market mixed modeling and relationships between the contributing circumstances during a crash can help to predict where crashes are potentially going to happen. We'd like to put together something that would give estimates on what enforcement activities do to help save lives in a literal sense, where you can actually assign a number to how much of a life was saved by stopping that drunk driver. And then that allows you to show how many lives like the enforcement community likely saved. It's uh, similar to the monetary one I talked about on the other slide. <clears throat> and of course the pipe dream of <laughs> providing real-time crash risk prediction. Every department wants that. Uh, several big cities around the world actually have such things, but they really dump some cash into making that happen. So see, pipe dream. All right, thanks for listening to me. And if you didn't, 
that's okay. We recorded it, so you can go back and listen to what you missed. Uh, also, now is a great time to start thinking of questions to ask me or to start typing them and uh, how Eugene had showed you earlier at the beginning of the webinar. Here's my contact information, my email address, so feel free to contact me about anything. I'd love to hear if you have recommendations or if you even find problems with our tools. Improving them, it feels nice, so I'd love some sort of feedback. Like I said earlier before, talking about future possibilities, we take all feedback and desires that folks uh, that have talked to us about needing and we bring it up as like a need from the Vision Zero community. If you say nothing, then you get whatever we give you. All right, so uh, take it away, Eugene. Matt, thank you very much um, for your presentation. And uh, I'm gonna leave Matt your contact information on the screen so people can uh, have a chance to record that and um, uh, which will also keep your screen sharing active in case you need to go back and, and demonstrate something else. Uh, so yes, just as a reminder, um, if you haven't, if you do have a question, um, find the Q&A icon on your screen and click it and open it up and type that into the box. We've already had a few questions coming in during Matt's presentation, so I'm gonna get to those. Um, first of all, I wanna recognize um, uh, Mark Ezell, who's on the webinar today and has already been responding in the Q&A um, in the Q&A window. Mark is the state director of the Governor's Highway Safety Program, so we appreciate him being on the webinar today and the expertise he's lending. Uh, so there may be some questions that uh, he uh, has particular uh, more expertise on than uh, Matt or or those of us. Um, uh, Tracy or I. So I will defer to Mark. He can uh, type some information into the screen, or if we are unable to answer your question, we'll get an answer to you. Um, also, I appreciate we do have several law enforcement um, officers on the webinar today, and there are some questions I know that are specific to law enforcement. So I appreciate those who've already weighed in with your comments um, in the Q&A, um, as well as the chat window on those as well. So again, if, if we don't quite have the expertise to answer your specific question, um, we will get you that question. Tracy's already let me know we are working on some um, other future presentations that we may be able to answer those questions better. So with that, uh, let me start with the first question because uh, it's got a, um, at least one like to it. Um, so Matt, uh, and if you can open your Q&A, you can um, follow along with that. So. Okay. Um, so the question, the com comment and the question is, if a motorist runs off into a ditch, damages their car, gets a broken collarbone, it's coded as a crash and used by agencies like uh, NCDOT to make improvements. However, if a bicyclist runs off the same road into the same ditch, damages their bike, breaks their collarbone, it's not a reportable crash in North Carolina and therefore not used by NCDOT to make safety improvements. So the question is, how do we get past this inherent bias and crash data when it comes to engineers using it to inform road design? Excellent question, Matt. Do you have any comment or, uh, on that one? Yeah, I can, I can say a little bit to that um, based on what I know. Uh, since I'm not uh, an NTDOT engineer, I can't really say whether or not uh, uh, what I will be, what I would be willing to work on um, because they are really data-based. Um, they take whatever data that they have, they hard, cold data, and they use that to try to figure out what improvements they should do. And that makes sense. That it feels like they should do that. But I think, uh, I think that's right. That's a good point about saying that different vehicles, uh, a bicycle is a vehicle, <clears throat> that uh, some, now you may actually find some uh, police officers and stuff, they might be a little sympathetic to that, but it's not like you can pick and choose whoever shows up. So my best guess in using any of these Vision Zero tools and trying to show that uh, uh, this place needs to be worked on, this street or curve or this, uh, this road, this local road that usually happens, um, uh, needs to be improved better for um, pedestrians and, and bicyclists, um, I would use the tool to find out where people have been hit by cars, 
uh, if they have been hit by cars, that usually means um, that the, the area there is not set up well for bicycles and pedestrians. Uh, so I would use that first as kind of like a, a screening tool to say, okay, where do I need to look further into this? Um, and if, if we don't get the data to be able to show you where a bicyclist fell off a road and, and broke their collarbone, um, I, I can't do, you know, really anything about that. Um, if there is a data source out there that has that, we would totally take that because that would be great. That would be awesome to show comparisons between that. So if you have any follow-ups about about that, or if there are data sources that we could connect to to get that, I think that would be amazing to have on the site as well. Matt, thank you for that. Um, and while you were responding, um, Warren Smith, I appreciate your response. He's added a comment uh, with a link um, noting that uh, this link defines, uh, you'll find information at this link on what constitutes a crash. Warren, thank you very much for oh, yeah, adding thanks, that Warren. comment. All right, uh, next question is, um, um, again, Matt, weigh in as, as best you can on this, but we've, we've also gotten some other um, comments already from uh, law enforcement officers. Uh, um, but the, uh, this particular person said uh, one of the first lessons um, learned from his uh, Lean Six Sigma training was the uh, to validate your ability to measure. And since law enforcement officers are the data collection source and crashes are just one of their many duties, um, are we also going to focus on increasing reliability of data that's being collected? And the um, question, uh, the comment goes on to say one of the first steps that um, he has to do in a study is to verify that the narrative of the collision matches the causes and type shown in the report. Matt, do you have any additional comments to that? Yes, uh, I've heard from uh, a lot of different law enforcement officers about this. There's also something called the uh, Traffic Records Coordinating Committee in North Carolina and in every state as far as I know. And one of their duties is to work on completeness for the data. So if there is a lane departure that was also drunk and speeding, but the crash report didn't say anything about the drinking, the intoxicated part, um, we show what data we have. But in trying to address the lack of data completeness, some of the tools, um, like Vision Zero Maps, we have a link to the crash report. And so uh, in the crash report, other than the pretty picture at the bottom, actually, I shouldn't say pretty, um, the picture at the bottom, it also has a typed out uh, kind of example, a, a, a kind of, a, I don't know how exactly to, exp it's whatever the officer, the law enforcement officer uh, wrote about the crash. And so they may have said, um, it, they were intoxicated, but in the actual crash report and the data, they might not have indicated that it was an intoxicated event. Uh, there is a whole bunch of problems, like you've mentioned, about data completeness, even accuracy, um, about, uh, like I showed, and that one uh, on Vision Zero Maps where the actual crash data location wasn't exactly where it said in the crash report. That kind of accuracy and data completeness is, is almost always going to be a problem. And there's programs um, in this state, if I recall, and in all other kinds of states at the national, state, local level, in trying to train law enforcement officers to try to be more complete. They are also trying different engineering ways of dealing with that, uh, different software and technology ways, you know, not letting you continue until you fill out a certain part of a form, that sort of stuff to try to increase it. But you did make a good point about that's just one of their duties. That's one of the things. They have to get the data so that uh, analysis can be done on it, solutions can be done to further prevent that. But they also have to get out there and, and, and stop the speeding people and stop uh, drunk people and, and people who are driving erratically, that might be more important to them. It's not more important to 
uh, potentially other people that like that really want that data piece. Maybe somebody who's invested in that exact crash, they may be more invested in getting data completeness while a trooper or a, an officer or somebody like that is more interested in stopping the ones that may further cause it. You're talking about a balanced thing that has plagued law enforcement officers for a long time and one of those things causing a problem is your issue of data completeness and accuracy. So I feel you, it's something that's gonna be a problem for a long time. Thank you, Matt. Now we'll also add that Tracy's made a note that says we're actually working to put together a panel session at the next um, state traffic safety conference uh, called Crash Investigation as Prevention, which would go uh, into helping um, officers improve data collection at the scene of a crash. Oh, that would so, be really good. Yeah, we should go to that. Yeah. We've got time for one more question, Matt. Um, and, uh, and before I get to that, I want to thank um, also um, Don and uh, others for weighing in um, with some additional comments um, in the Q&A about um, coding of crashes. I appreciate, uh, again, all that information. Um, last question, would it be too overwhelming to map all reported accidents as it appears now only fatalities and serious injury accidents are mapped? So one of the big problems about that <clears throat> is, as you said, the overwhelming part, uh, the amount of data that that does. In some regards, crashes the technology. If we wanted to show every crash, um, and I wanted to point out, I never say accident, I always say crash, um, any of those crashes, uh, if we wanted to show every single crash in all of North Carolina, and somebody wanted to see that on a map, that's a huge amount of data to put onto a map. And a lot of the online tools that we would want the public to see and use can't show it. It's too much data. The only way we would be able to do something similar to that would to be to show some kind of analysis that kind of helps to show, basically guesses at the question that you're really trying to ask. So if you wanted to see all the crashes, even uh, the no injury ones, only the <clears throat> personal property damage, that kind of stuff. Even if you wanted to see all of those, you might actually be wanting to see where is it concentrated? <clears throat> so we may, and if we're not already doing that, go ahead and tell us, email me and say, this is what I want. Um, and, and we'll try to get that going. But if we'll, we'll try to show something that shows where the concentrations are, that's a whole lot less data to just say where the concentrations are than to actually show every single point, every single thing. Oh, and that brings up a good uh, thing I wanted to mention about uh, location things. I mentioned something about it earlier um, about the distracted driving ones of where not all of them can be located on a map. That has to do with completeness of the crash reports, but a lot of the stuff can't automatically be found by uh, GIS algorithms to actually determine exactly where on the map that crash happened. Or, I mean, that applies to everything in GIS, not just crashes and stuff. There's always a problem where some of those points can't be found. We, um, for at least the uh, motor carry enforcement, we've hired students to manually find them. They would have to open up all the data, find the ones that the algorithms could not find, and then read through crash reports, read through things like that, then manually find it on a map and put a point. And to do that for every crash that isn't able to be located in North Carolina is a big deal. I know that the DOT is constantly working on that, tweaking their algorithms, trying to increase the percentage at least a little bit to be able to locate more. But the problem stems from uh, data completeness to an error in the officer's laptop to uh, a typing error that they typed wrong about what interstate they happened to be on, uh, what uh, mile marker thing was closest to them. So when you have all those missed um, locations, it can throw off even 
uh, a quick looking analysis. So if you're looking at something like, uh, like Burlington, when we look at Burlington, we see some, some missing data completeness when we're looking at locations. I doubt that Burlington has such a, a spotless record. If it does, awesome. And I'm so totally sorry to Burlington, <laughs> but um, you'll find there's a lot of data that doesn't seem to be there about fatalities and serious injuries. That may be because we're not getting the data from there or the data we are getting from there isn't complete or accurate enough for it to be located on Vision Zero Maps. And when you open up that table, like I showed you, there's another tab on that table that says non-located crashes. So even if you're looking at all the lane departure ones, you'll see the located ones, but they're the non-located ones are also listed on there. So I actually forgot what your question was. I kind of went off uh, on the tangent there, but oh yeah, it was about uh, overwhelming data. Uh, yeah, once uh, technologies, they're always getting better. And um, at some point, I remember six years ago or so, we were afraid of showing more than 100 points on a map because it started to crash things. Now we're able to show up to 10,000 points um, on Vision Zero Maps. And any more than that, it can handle, I think, up to 400,000. But the amount of time you have to wait for it to draw all the points goes up to about 30 minutes to an hour. And I don't think people really want to wait around just to see all the points for that. So that's why we tried to say, okay, technology's not there yet. So we'll try to go with some summaries, try to answer some of the questions that you may have, and we'll, we'll show that. Now, if we're not answering some of the questions that you do have, let me know and I'll, I'll write it down. I'll bring it up to the team. Um, if it seems like something we can do quickly, maybe we'll just throw it out there. If it's something that might take a lot more, we'll bring it up to the deciders. And so that they can say, okay, work on that. Don't work on that. Work on that. That's a bigger need. So I would love to do, to hear anything like that. Thank you. Matt, thanks very much uh, for your presentation, for all those answers. And again, I want to thank everyone uh, uh, today, both for your questions and for adding your comments. Um, before you go, I'm going to leave the uh, web meeting um, open a bit longer after we conclude here today, because um, you want to if you have any additional questions or any additional comments, uh, go ahead and add those to the um, Q&A because uh, we'd like to um, uh, collect all those. It's, it's, it's going to help us um, help you uh, with developing some additional um, training and, and some, that's going to come available later. Uh, so any and all feedback is very much appreciated. Um, I will point out in the chat window um, specifically earlier, I posted a link uh, to the Vision Zero website, which is where you can find additional links to all of the um, tools that Matt presented today. So find that link in the chat window and, um, and go explore those tools um, and uh, reach out to Matt if you've got any questions uh, about that. So if we were unable to get to your question today, and I think we got through all the questions that were posted in the Q&A so far, um, we'll do our best to get a response to you soon. Um, and remember to watch for an email with the recording link. If you want to, um, if you missed any detail, you want to go back and review it, we'll get that link out to you as soon as the recording is available to post. Um, we'd like to invite you to uh, join us for any, uh, some other traffic safety webinars that are already planned for this series. Um, so if you'll visit the, um, the link on, that's on your screen, it'll list all the upcoming webinars that we have, as well as some in-person web uh, workshops. Now, obviously, in, in light of the, um, the current uh, coronavirus situation, some of our um, uh, workshops may get delayed um, that were previously scheduled for coming up, let's say, in April. Um, so um, particularly, there is some law enforcement training um, on bike and pedestrian safety. Um, I know the one this month um, was canceled. There's one scheduled for, uh, for April. That's still uh, questionable, but certainly be a patient and understanding with us. But we hope we'll, those that are uh, planned for later on this summer and um, that they hopefully the live training will not be impacted. But we'll continue to make uh, webinars available um, to uh, give you this opportunity for training at the convenience of your home um, or your office location.
Uh, also at the same website, uh, you'll find information about the next uh, North Carolina Traffic Safety Conference and Expo. Uh, the one for this year was canceled, so our next one is actually going to be in fall of uh, 2021, in August of 2021. We hope you'll go ahead and make plans now in August of 2021 to attend that next conference. Uh, we welcome you to propose any topics for the conference presentation uh, on this website. There's a link for presentation proposals, so please submit uh, your ideas to this. Um, and with that, we want to thank you very much again for participating in today's webinar, and bye for now.